Hey everybody, it is Jody Franklin here, the admin of this group. Thanks so much for being part of such a lovely, wonderful group and thanks for all your sharing. I'm here today with Jen Miller, who is with Practice Better. And Practice Better is a cash-based uh, practice management tool that I have just started using and I am kicking myself for not having done it previously because when I first started my functional medicine business, I was kind of bootstrapping it and I wanted to cut corners a little bit and not spend a lot of money. And not that this, this program is not very expensive either, but I just started doing things in my Google Drive. And then as my practice grew, I had to hire an admin to you know, remind people of appointments and do my scheduling. And I had to hire a bookkeeper to keep track of all my billing. And I had to use DocuSign for my contracts. And, you know, my dispensary was a separate thing and everything was separate. And now I'm getting into group programs and that's a whole other ball game. And what I'm finding is that Practice Better also handles that. So it's just an all-in-one place to stay super organized with your practice. And I honestly would have saved thousands and thousands of dollars getting this software in the first place. And so I just wanted to bring Jen on today. And there is a special discount for members of this group available this week, if you're interested in doing it. And we will probably have an ongoing discount available as well, but not as steep a discount as this week with the coupon code that Terry's going to put in the comments below and uh, share with you guys on Facebook. So if any of you are on our email list, you'll also get that sent to you with the replay of this of this webinar. So without further ado, I want to welcome Jen. Thank you so much for coming on today. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say about Practice Better. I've been so um, amazed by its capabilities and I hope you guys think so too. Amazing. Thank you, Jody. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I'm really excited to be here with you all today. Um, so like Jody said, my name is Jen Miller. So I am a business success coach for Practice Better. And yeah, so maybe I'll do just this, a little bit of an intro to what Practice Better does. I mean, Jody gave a beautiful overview um, there, but yeah, so it's basically a complete management platform uh, for your practice designed specifically for health and wellness practitioners and professionals. Um, so really the platform was de designed to support you not only on sort of the back end of your practice, like Jody was sharing in terms of some of that administrative side of things, right? But also to really create this amazing client experience. So the client um, and working with you through Practice Better has their own client portal and things are very seamless on their side as well. Um, so it really is a win-win. So it really just, yeah, allows you to streamline your workflow, create that amazing patient experience and um, just have things come together in a very harmonious way um, without having information fall through the cracks or spending a lot of time on some of those admin pieces. So I, yeah, I would love to really share today the platform. So um, I'll go ahead and maybe share my screen, um, Jody, if that's good with you. Definitely. Okay. And that's a great point while you're getting that up, Jen. I the communications between the emails and sometimes messaging me, they were getting lost and I would have to cut and paste and make sure I was keeping track of everything. Whereas with Practice Better, it's been so seamless just having the communication directly in there and I can easily access it and not worry about whether or not I'm forgetting something. So mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So can you see my screen? Okay. Sure can. Okay, amazing. So this is the Practice Better um, platform. So this is what it's gonna look like from a practitioner standpoint. And I just wanted to walk through some of the really sort of key features to just highlight how this can help really streamline your practice and your work with patients. Um, and so the first sort of piece of the puzzle that I wanna talk about to sort of set the stage for this is sort of that onboarding stage, right? So when you think about onboarding a patient, it's everything that needs to happen when you first start working with them. So the scheduling, the managing their payments, maybe sending forms and collecting information from them, um, sending them reminders for their sessions, that kind of thing. And as we've sort of alluded to already, you know, these, these type of things um, may seem simple, but without that system in place, it can really take a lot of time away from what you do best and what you're passionate about, which is actually working with your patients, right? 
So the first thing that I want to highlight is um, setting up your services and practice better. So that's sort of like the first thing you would probably do um, when you're looking to work with your patient. And I just want to do that so I can highlight sort of the different ways you can customize your services and what that sort of looks like. So this is the dashboard, like I said. So I'm just going to head to my practice, my services. And this will just really give you some insight into sort of the depth with which you can manage your scheduling um, with practice better. So I'm just going to use this initial consultation as an example, and we'll just go into edit it so I can sort of highlight a couple of those pieces. Um, yeah, and I know Jody did mention this, but as we go along, if there are any questions, please feel free to comment below or put those in the chat if you're joining us in Zoom, and I'll try to get to them. You know, we'll also have time at the end as well. All right, amazing. So when you're setting up your service, you know, there's a lot of ways to customize it, but a couple of the key things that I wanted to highlight um, is regards to firstly the payment option. So in Practice Better, you have the option to link a Stripe or Square account. And so this is going to allow you to actually manage all of your payments right through Practice Better. Um, so you can actually have your client pay or your patient pay right at the time of booking. And then you don't have to worry about like chasing them for payments or sending invoices, which you can also choose to send invoices if that's a preference. However, to keep it really streamlined, you can link a Stripe or Square account and then you can just collect that payment right at the time of booking, which is really, really helpful. So this is, you know, sort of some of the payment options you have when you're setting up your service. So, um, you know, if it's, you say it's a discovery session and it's just free, you can also hide, um, choose to hide the fee um, or you can display it with no payment required. And then these last two options um, will allow you, like I said, to collect that payment at the time of booking, um, which is really really helpful. So I wanted to next highlight service availability to just share how you can actually conduct your services and practice better. So there's a few different options. And when we're looking at setting up this service specifically, this is sort of a one on one service. However, we do also have the option to run group services. So if you are working with a group of patients, or like Jody alluded to the group program piece, which we will dive into that specifically in a little bit, um, you can actually host video calls. So you can, what we have built into practice better is like a tele, built in telehealth basically. So that is within the platform and that will allow you to have your consultations one-on-one -on -one with patients virtually. But we also have an integration with the Zoom and that's going to allow you to have those group calls. So if you are working with a group of patients or a group program, then you can integrate your Zoom account and that allows you to you know, set up those group sessions and run those right through practice better. Um, so it just creates, again, that really seamless experience. You're not having to worry about, you know, following up, um, sending links back and forth for sessions and that kind of thing. It'll all just be right within the platform um, and you can choose how you want to set that up. But you do have both options, which just really gives you that flexibility on how you want to support your patients, right? Um, I know many, many of uh, practitioners um, went virtual this past year. And so whether you're doing, you know, partial, virtual, partial in person or all virtual, um, this, this feature can really support that process being very seamless for you and allowing you to really support your patient still at that very high level um, if you're working virtually as well. All right. And one other thing I wanted to highlight here, um, just as I scroll down, so when you're setting up your service, so when you think about scheduling a session with a patient, um, you're probably going to want, um, you know, reminder emails and um, confirmation emails and that kind of thing to go out. And so with Practice Better, that's all automated, um, but you do have the option to even customize those um, automated notifications. So that's this section right here. Um, so let's say, you know, it's the um, session confirmation notification, you can choose to edit that template. And I just wanted to open this up so you can sort of see what that could look like, that you can really go in and totally customize the title, the subject, and the whole body of that message. Um, and that will just allow you to, you know, include any additional information you wanted to share with the patient at the, at the time of booking um, and, you know, really personalize it and that kind of thing. So, you know, these will be automated no matter what, but if you do want to customize them a little bit further, you do have that option as well to just really personalize. 
Um, and just one thing to mention here, you'll notice a couple of these sort of placeholder fields with the percentage signs. So basically what that's going to do specifically in this case is actually pull right from the patient's um, record. So it'll pull their first name in here in this case. And so just another way to sort of fur further personalize those notifications to your patients. All right, wonderful. I'm going to head over to advanced options to highlight a couple other pieces here that may be helpful in your practice. Um, the first is payment plan. So, you know, let's say you have a service that is maybe, uh, you know, a higher price service and you want to allow your client to have the, or your patient to have the option to um, pay in installments, or you wanna have, you know, collected maybe a deposit payment from them uh, first, and then they can pay in installments. So you can actually set those payment plans up right in practice better, really, really seamlessly, just right inside of the service here. Um, and so, like I said, you know, that may make more sense or be more relevant for a higher price service, depending on, you know, what type of offerings you have, um, but that option is available for you there. Um, and this, this payment plan option is also, you can also set that up for your group programs as well. So I'll just mention that. One other piece here is booking page forms. So I mentioned at the beginning, sort of that collection of information from your client as part of that onboarding process, right? So you likely have an intake form, um, maybe even some sort of evaluation form, something along those lines that you want the client to complete. And when you're setting up your service, you can actually choose to link a booking page form. Um, and so what that allows you to do is actually collect information from your client right at the time of booking. So there's a couple ways to utilize forms in practice better. This is just one of them. But if there were, you know, if you wanted to have the client complete the intake form right at the time of booking, you didn't want to have to, you know, send it afterwards, then you can attach it right here to the service. And that means that the client won't be able to complete that booking um, process without completing that form. So it's right on the booking page, which can be really helpful if, you know, it's something that you want um, right away kind of thing. And like I said, there's a couple other ways to utilize forms and practice better, which I'll, which I'll go through. Um, but I did want to highlight that just because that's really helpful um, in being able to collect the information you need from your client. All right. Perfect. And Jody, just let me know, or, or Terry, if there are any questions in the Facebook group, you can just Unmute, unmute yourself and let me know if there's anything relevant I'm happy to answer as we go along too. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> okay, cool. Amazing. All right. Wonderful. So that's sort of, yeah, I really wanted to use this service again to just highlight some of those key features that will really allow you to streamline that onboarding process with your client. That's sort of typically that like first touch point, right? Um, and make that really seamless for you and for them. And the next, next step, important step, is actually working with your patients, right? So they've booked in with you, and now you need to start working together. So there's obviously lots of moving parts um, in that process. Maybe it's, you know, conducting your actual consultations and sessions with the client, taking your notes, um, sharing resources and recommendations, running your programs, um, keeping your clients accountable and, and keeping um, in communication with them. So there's lots of, lots of pieces to that puzzle. And so I wanted to highlight a few of those in practice better here. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is head to um, one of my patients. So I have Mary Smith set up as sort of a, a test patient here in my, in my platform. And so in clicking on um, Mary's name, this takes me to what's called her client record. And this is basically going to show you everything going on in relation to my client, Mary. Um, so this is really nice because it's basically sort of a snapshot of, you know, all of her upcoming sessions, any tasks that have been set for her. Um, and then also this recent activity stream. And so this is one thing I did want to highlight because this is really nice if you are wondering, oh, you know, did that task reminder get sent to my patient? Um, you know, did that, did they complete that form or, you know, whatever it is, you can really just navigate always back to this recent activity stream for this list of, you know, everything that's gone out to your client. So everything from session booked, again, the task reminder piece, maybe um, she's enrolled in a program. And so that will let you know that a, a module was released to her. And you'll notice this little email delivered icon here. And so that 
is really nice and just confirming to you that that email um, indeed was sent to the client. If there was any e issues with their email address, let's say, then it may say email bounced, um, something along those lines. So then you would know, um, you know, it just gives you that reassurance with, with the communications that are going out to the client, to the patient, basically. I actually use this quite a bit too, Jen, now that I'm getting used to the software and I will take the notes right in practice better. So I have all my notes handy and then also any follow-up notes I'm sending will go right in there. So it's, and then you can make them visible to the patient or client so they can see them in real time, right? When you write as soon as you're done with it. So you don't have to send a separate email. It's all done right in there. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'll actually show the notes feature. That's a great segue, Jody, because that's, that's such a helpful feature. So yeah, what Jody's referring to is, is the notes feature here. And so let's take a look there now. Um, and basically this allows you to take notes based on your sessions with your patients. And, and I'll show in a second here how you can really easily share certain parts of that note with the patient, like basically instantly when you're done. So I'm just gonna use this in uh, initial consultation note um, that I already have set up here to just highlight this. So basically you can you know, create a new note when you're ready to take notes um, for your patient. Maybe that's like right before the session you wanted to add a couple notes or just during or after. Um, another thing I'll mention just before I dive into sort of how this actually works is you can create what's called note templates as well. So if you have, you know, say a common um, set of questions or prompts or something that you, you want to have um, in all of your notes uh, on your side as the practitioner, then you can create a template for that. So you don't have to retype everything every time. So it's gonna save you a lot of time. Um, so, you know, maybe again, like it's a certain set of questions that you always ask your client at the initial consultation and you want to make sure that those prompts are always in your, your note, then you can create a template for that. And then you can, you know, use that with multiple different patients, which is really, really helpful. Uh, I was even thinking like something like an acid reflux template of all the things that I recommend for that person, or, you know, if they're, if they have to go gluten-free, all the, all the considerations with that. So it's easy to just put the template in rather than cutting and pasting all the time. Exactly, Jody. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a perfect example. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the note template here. So in this case, I have a couple of different sections. So um, of course you can choose the title. This is just internal. Um, you can also put a summary here, if that makes sense to you, a date and a date prepared. And then this box here is the option to share certain sections of the note and any attached documents with your patient. Um, and so that's important. So I'll show you what that means in a minute. So as I scroll down, I've got multiple text boxes here. And when you're creating a new note from scratch, you'll just simply click the red fast action to um, add a new section here. But given I've already set this one up, I just wanted to highlight a few things. So I've just got a few notes in here just to sort of show what this could look like. And the reason why I have these in separate text um, boxes is just to keep it organized. Firstly, but also secondly, as I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see this section here has the green, the green little eye icon toggled on. And so that means that this section is going to be visible to my client when I save the note. So only this section. So that's a really important piece is um, you can keep every other section private um, and you'll know it's private by the little um, you know, gray icon with the line through it. That means that's only private to you as the practitioner. Um, but if you do have a certain section you want to share with the client, you can toggle that on. And then, yeah, as Jody was saying, you can just easily share that with the, with the patient. Like as soon as you save the note that only this section will get sent to the patient. So if you have, you know, a couple follow-up um, action takeaways for the patient right after the session, or even their full plan, whatever it is that you want to share with them, following that session, you can just input that here and toggle that on and that will send um, right to the patient. So it's really nice because often, you know, there may be um, a couple, you know, follow-up items or resources you've mentioned during the session or just something you don't want to forget. And so you can just pop that right into a text box, um, share that with the client right away. And then you can always follow up later with your full protocol or, you know, whatever that might be. Within your note, you also have the option to attach documents if that's relevant for you. You can link protocols, which I'll go into protocols in a moment. 
Um, and then you can also set up tasks for you or your client right inside of your note. So again, just a way to really streamline it. Um, and you know, you don't have to sort of remind yourself after the session to go set up that task for Mary on X item, you can just create that right inside of the note. So it's just really easy for you as a practitioner. All right, wonderful. Okay, so that's the notes piece. Um, and while we're here, one other thing I just wanted to highlight um, is bookings and packages. So each of your client is going to have this section, which is going to show all of the upcoming sessions that they have. And I just wanted to highlight, um, you know, one of the sessions here that I have set up as a, a video session that when you're ready to start that session, if you've um, set it up as a video session, you can simply just click this um, start session icon and that will just open up the telehealth window right inside of your platform and the client on their side will have the exact same link. So it's just really, really seamless and easy to start those sessions. So just wanted to sort of highlight that piece for you. All right, amazing. Now I referred to tasks a few times, so I do want to share that piece. So in Practice Better, you have the opportunity to create tasks for your client as well as for yourself as the practitioner. Um, and so this is obviously really, really helpful um, when you're working with your client in terms of keeping them accountable um, and keeping yourself accountable if there's certain tasks you want to set up for yourself. And we actually just recently released a new feature around recurring tasks, which is really awesome because, you know, if there's a certain task that you want your client to complete, say every week or every month um, or every day, then you can set it up to recur, which is really, really helpful just in taking that manual um, step off your plate. So it's just automa automated and you don't have to worry about manually, you know, following up to send that reminder to your client to say complete their, um, you know, their form or their journal entry or to, you know, check out that resource that you shared or, you know, whatever task it might be, you can just set that up to recur at whatever, whatever interval you'd like. Um, so that can be really, really helpful. I love that, Jen. And even just to, I mean, talk about helping with compliance. Like if, if you want someone to meditate three times a week, you can put it in there to remind them and they'll, you know, really, it can help your, your them get better results. I mean, that's amazing. Absolutely, Jody. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a great example. And it just, you know, it, it will, you know, basically when you set up the reminder for the client or the task for the client, you can also choose to have, um, a due date and a reminder date. So it sort of even sets that, um, you know, expectation even further on if there's, if there is a due date, if that makes sense. And then you can also set a separate reminder date to remind them maybe a few days before that date or something along those lines. So you do have that flexibility when you're setting up those tasks for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. So another piece I wanted to share is our chat, uh, chat function. So this is really speaking to that communication aspect with your patient, being able to stay in touch with them really, really easily and seamlessly right through Practice Better. So I'm just hovering over the messaging center here right now, and I'm just going to click on that. And I've got right here my chat going with my client, Mary Smith. And so this is sort of what it's going to look like when you're chatting back and forth one on one with a patient. Um, and so it's sort of just, you know, little, little text bubbles here. You can send um, attachments or resources. You can use emojis, um, which is nice just to sort of keep it fun and interactive. You can send links and, and so on. So it's really just a nice way to keep in touch with your patient. And, you know, you can um, choose to have that option for them or not. So if that's not something you want them to have access to, you can disable that. But it is, you know, if, if you want to give your patient that ability to message you, then this is a really nice way to do that. All right. And yeah, once when I'm talking about group programs in a little bit, I'll come back to this chat actually, because I want to show you that what the group chat looks like, because it's a little different and a little more dynamic. So I'll show that um, once we get to that, that piece. All right. So I'm just going to head back to Mary Smith here. There's a couple questions too, and I don't know if you want to table these till later, but People are asking about ordering labs and ordering if you're prescribing. This is, is it, does it get to that extent or is it just for supplements and things like that? And I guess um, in terms of uh, billing and 
uh, not billing, um, what was the question? The lab lab orders. Does it does it get into that at all or? No, so we don't have an integration from a lab's perspective. So that would be done externally to the platform. Um, one thing I'll mention with that, though, if you do have things like labs or other documentation that you do want to still, you know, store within practice better, each of your clients have their own document folder. So, um, you know, you could always store other documents there. But yeah, from the lab perspective, we don't have an integration directly um, at the moment. And that hasn't been an issue for me at all. I mean, it's just like, I don't, I just keep that separate and, and keep in my notes that, that that lab has been ordered or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you could even use like the tasks um, functionality to set tasks for yourself with a reminder to say, you know, check on that lab or order that lab or, you know, whatever it is. So you can still utilize some of the functionality around that for sure. Yeah, great question. Any other questions that I can answer right now, Jody? Therese was wondering about prescribing too. I think same thing. It's not a platform for that, but it, it you can obviously keep track of what you've done within the platform. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing I will mention, not exactly that, but um, from a supplementation perspective. So if that's something that you do with your clients, we do have an integration with uh, full script and well of eight from a supplement perspective. So um, I'll actually, maybe I'll show right now the protocol feature. Cause that's typically where you'd use that integration. Um, cause I think that that may be helpful if, if there are practitioners that do use either full script or well of eight. Um, so I'll just maybe show that now. So I just went into Mary's protocols and I'm just going to edit this getting started protocol that I already have started here for her. Um, let's go into that. Yeah, so as I scroll through, this is sort of set up, but this is, you know, the protocol feature is really designed to allow you to share um, recommendations with your client on specific things. So let's say, you know, it's a hormone balancing hormone protocol. So you can really sort of input um, some nice formatting. You can import uh, in, insert images um, into this protocol. And then as I scroll down here, you also have the option to create specific food recommendations. And you can even save these uh, for yourself to reuse over and over again. So if you have common food recommendations that you provide to many clients, you can save them and you can just reuse them in, in multiple protocols. So that's really nice. You don't have to like copy and paste or retype. It's all just saved for you. And same with lifestyle recommendations, sort of the, the same process there. You can save those and, and use those over and over. And then supplement recommendations, this is where sort of that, that um, uh, dispensary aspect might link if you are using full script or Wellivate. If you're not, you can still use the supplement piece. You would just um, maybe have the name of the supplement and you could even put a link in the description to a different dispensary if you were using that. That could be a way around it. Um, and I did want to highlight this if you do include supplements in your protocols for your client that it'll create this beautiful little supplement chart for them. So this is what it will look like on the client side, um, which basically just allows them to see, you know, the dosage and when um, time of day um, and just makes it really easy for them um, to refer back to. They could even print that out kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so that's sort of the protocol feature. And, and we, we love that just for being able to share all those different, you know, specific recommendations with your client. Awesome. Um, Sharice wants to know about, oh, actually, I'll, I'll do Andrelis' um, uh, question first. She wants to know about consent forms and legal forms. And that's uh, one of the best benefits, I think, or one of the better benefits is that you can have that all within Practice Better as well, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's a great segue. So I might as well talk about forms now. Um, so yeah, in Practice Better, you can um, basically have all your forms created right in the platform. So you can do everything virtually with your, with your patients. You can send them virtually. The patient can fill them out virtually. They can sign it virtually. And it's all stored within Practice Better. So I'll just head to my practice forms and waivers here. So there's a couple of things with uh, with regards to forms. Um, so these are a bunch that I already have sort of set up, but I'm just going to click the red fast action button here at the bottom right. And you'll notice that there's a few options. So the first thing is you can actually create a form from an existing template. So in Practice Better, we have a few form templates that you can use as a starting point if they're relevant to you. So 
I'm just opening this up so you can sort of get a snapshot into what some of those um, sort of look like. And again, you know, you can use these, you can open them up and you can totally customize them from there. They're just a really nice starting point. So I'll even just maybe open this intake questionnaire just so you can sort of see what that looks like. So this is what's called the form builder. Um, so because this is a template, there already are, um, you know, a bunch of questions already built into the form. But I just wanted to highlight that even if you use a template, you can still go in and edit everything. You could even delete certain sections if they weren't relevant to you. You can add additional sections. Um, so it's very, very customizable. Or you can just start from scratch and build your own form. Um, so, you know, however you want to do that. Um, is, is available to you. And, you know, let's say you have an existing form and maybe it's in a PDF format um, and, you know, you want to build that into practice better so you can go and build that. And, you know, even though it may take, you know, a few extra minutes on the front end to build that into, into the platform, it really does pay off because then, like I said, you can do everything virtually. You can um, send that to the patient virtually. They can fill it out virtually and it'll be stored right in practice better. So um, it's really a beneficial in that sense. Um, I love how you can integrate that on your website too. So you can have your forms right on your website. They can click on it and then fill out the forms. And so there's no faxing or emailing or uh, yeah. so much easier. Exactly, Jody. Yeah, that's a great point. And I'll actually just go back here um, to my list of forms. Um, so let's say it's that intake questionnaire. So there's a few ways you can you can sort of do that. So I'll just click the, the three dots there to get this list of options. Um, but if you just go share link, then this is going to generate a link um, for your form. So like Jody was saying, you could put that on your website um, and you don't have to yeah, worry about faxing or emailing or anything. Um, you can just use that link and the client or the patient will click that link and it'll take them right to the form. Um, so it's really, really seamless from that front. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot you can do with forms. Um, we, we won't be able to go into like a full um, demo of forms today because I actually just did a deep dive um, yesterday on forms. So we have a full like webinar on our YouTube channel about forms. So if that's something that you wanna learn more about, um, we have tons of resources and, and tutorials on forms. But yeah, overall, it's, it's a really, really um, beneficial piece of the platform and being able to collect information from your client in a very seamless and automated um, fashion. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions coming through about forms at all? I don't think I see anything in the Zoom chat here. Okay. There wasn't any about forms. There was one about which um, plan they would sign up for if they want to do group programs. Mm, yeah, yeah. So I'll talk all about the programs piece in a moment here. Um, okay. But yeah, I'll, I'll dive into that for sure. Um, but yeah, just as a quick side note, so um, we have two types of programs that you can do in practice better a fixed state and an evergreen. Um, so if you want to do a fixed state program, you'll need to be on the professional plan or higher um, and the evergreen on the plus plan or higher. All right. Cool. So let's head over to, yeah, one last thing I wanted to share. I, I did mention this briefly, but just the documents folder. So each of your clients, um, actually, let's head to Mary's documents folder specifically, because I just wanted to highlight a few things within that. So as soon as your client um, joins Practice Better, a, a document folder will automatically be created for them. Um, and this is a nice way to share resources with them um, really seamlessly through the platform. So this is Mary's folder here. Um, I've created a couple specific folders for her, um, but you can also create new folders to just really organize things um, if that makes sense for you. Within your client's document folder, you can choose to share or not share a document with them. So just because it lives within say Mary's folder doesn't mean it's actually shared with her. So you'll notice this little um, people icon here and that's letting me know that this document or folder is shared. So you'll see that this one doesn't have that. And so if I wanted to go ahead and share it with Mary, I would just click on this manage, manage sharing settings and choose to share that with my client. And then you'll notice that um, 
the little icon gets updated next to that document. And you can also unshare that at any time too. So just another way to share resources within the platform that keeps it really organized and streamlined for you. All right. Yeah, so actually let's go, let's go right into programs because I think that that is going to be really beneficial to just sort of get a snapshot um, into how you can really work with groups of patients in practice better. So like I mentioned in, in the platform, we have two types of group programs that you can run um, or online courses or programs. So the first is a fixed date program. And so a fixed date pro program is basically going to um, run on a calendar date. So run from say May 1st to May 30th. So it's based on a calendar date. And then the evergreen option is just sort of ongoing. So it's, um, you know, the, the way in which the content releases to the patient is based on when they signed up. So you can set, you know, say you want the first module to release to them, say a week after they sign up and then two weeks and then three weeks. It's sort of, you know, based on their sign up date versus um, a calendar date, if that makes sense. So you have both options available to you. I do want to show um, the fixed date option here just to highlight a couple of things. So I'm just going to head into this health reset program. So yeah, we, we love the programs feature because it really is another, another nice way to share resources basically with a group um, of patients. And so, you know, even if um, you were working one-on-one, -on -one, you could actually still utilize the programs feature because it just could give you the opportunity to really organize the content you want to share with them and drip it out to them based on a certain, you know, either time elapsed if you're doing the evergreen option or a certain calendar date. Um, so what I wanted to do first is just highlight um, the actual way to sort of build the content into the program is using what's called the modules. Um, and so you can set up these modules in whatever way would make sense for you in terms of maybe it's different, um, you know, topics or themes, or maybe it's based on the week, you know, week one, week two, week three, um, you know, whatever it might be, you can totally customize that to whatever you'd like. So I'm just going to edit this first module here to sort of highlight another couple pieces of um, what the program's feature has to offer. So for each module, you can set um, a title, module name, you can include a description. So that description will show on the registration page if you want the patient to be able to sort of check out what that, you know, what each module has in store for them. And then this piece here is key. So this is going to allow you to select when you want that content to be made available to your patient who signed up for the program. So in this case, you know, we have it based um, back in January when I set this up. Um, and then you can also set that time as well. So what that means is this, you know, even if the patient registered for this program, they wouldn't be able to see the content until this date and time. So it'll automatically be released to them at this date and time. And then you can optionally opt to have a welcome email sent to the patient when that module begins. Um, and you can customize that email similarly to how we looked at customizing uh, the service confirmation email. So when you're building out the actual content of the module, there's a lot you can do, but I just wanted to highlight a few things in terms of um, really the ability to make this look really nice. You can you know, add different formatting, you can add images. Um, as I scroll down here, you'll be able to see that you can also um, embed video content. So if you have a video that you have housed on either YouTube or Vimeo, then you can actually embed that right inside of the module like this one is. You also have the option to just simply attach the video file if that's more relevant for you, if you don't have your content housed on either YouTube or Vimeo. Um, as I scroll down here, so you can, I've just utilized this text box to sort of add um, a header and I'll show you what this looks like um, in a moment to the, on the sort of the patient side. Um, but yeah, you can attach documents um, and also I have an audio file here just to share that you can attach audio files as well. So I wanted to also, before we take a look at how this looks on the patient side, you can also with each program module have tasks. And this is really nice because 
it basically allows you to create a task for your patient that's really targeted specifically to that module. Um, and what that means is, you know, as soon as that module is released to the patient um, based on the time and date we set here, then they'll also receive the, any tasks that you've set up for them within that module. So again, just supporting to keep them accountable um, and compliant and all of that. And then lastly, you also have the option to attach any forms or worksheets that you have set up in Practice Better. Um, we just looked at the forms piece, but you know, in, in this example, I just have attached a feedback survey form that I created just as an example to share, you know, maybe you want um, the client to submit, um, you know, sort of a check-in feedback every, uh, every week as part of the group program or part of the program, then you can attach that here and that'll automatically be sent to them when the module releases, um, which is really nice. Because again, it's just another way to automate um, those that forms piece. All right, so let's take a look at what this module would look like to the patient. So I'm just gonna go preview here, just so you can sort of see what that'll look like here. Um, so I'm just going to scroll down and, and I really wanted to highlight, yeah, again, when you embed the video, this is, you know, the patient will literally just be able to click and watch that right inside of the module, which is really, really handy. Um, and I've set up these sort of headers here for those downloads. And with the downloads to the attachments, I'll just mention that you, it's optional to allow them to download it. Um, so if you just want the patient to only keep the resource inside of Practice Better and not download it, you can disable that. So that's optional on your side. And then we've got the tasks and those forms as well. So that's a little summary of the modules piece within a program. So yeah, just a really nice way to, again, share resources um, with your clients in an organized fashion. Um, and like I said, you know, even if you're working one-on-one -on -one with patients, this could still be a nice way to share resources, right? Because really it just allows you to drip out that content to them and to have it stay really organized as well. That's really great. Great features. Yeah, yeah. And I, I did want to highlight too, if you, if you are using the programs feature to work with a group of patients, um, you do have the option to actually link group sessions right to your fixed date program. Um, and so that would be really nice in terms of, let's say maybe you have a weekly group um, session for the duration of the program, then you can link you know, all of those sessions right within the fixed date program here. And what that means is that as soon as the patient registers for the program, they'll be automatically enrolled in all of these sessions, which means they're going to have the link for everything. They'll be able to put it into their calendar and so on. So it just, um, you know, automates that process for you. You don't have to worry about manually sending them, you know, the session links and um, reminding them and all of that stuff. It'll just happen automatically for you. And then the last piece, which I alluded to earlier when we were looking at the chat, is within your program, you can optionally set up a group chat. Um, so that's what we call the feed here. And so this one I have set up just with a few different posts. You can sort of get a feel for what that might look like. Um, but it's a really great way to foster that sense of community um, and communication and sharing of resources and, um, you know, accountability, all, the, all that stuff if you are working with a group of patients. So as you can see here, you can add photos um, to your post. Um, members of the chat can comment on each other's posts. They can tag each other. They can use emojis. Um, so, you know, there's so, it's somewhat similar feel to maybe a Facebook group in certain ways in just terms of um, being able to tag and, and share and that kind of thing. I love this because you don't have to deal with the Facebook algorithms and the Facebook may be kicking you off because you're doing alternative medicine. So this is wonderful. I didn't even know this existed and I've been using the software so uh, much. Too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing, Jody. Yeah. And it's, it's so nice to be able to keep it all in practice better. Right. And like you said, yeah, you don't have to worry about any of the Facebook rules or any of that stuff. Um, and you can just keep it right in the platform. And then it's nice for the patient too, because then they're not having to use multiple platforms. Like if you're already working with them in practice better, they can just access sort of the community feed, the group piece right inside of the platform as well. Yeah. Um, Some people don't even want to be on Facebook. So it's yeah. good. it'll include everybody, not just the people who are on Facebook. So that's great. 
Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think I mentioned this yet, but um, a really other nice feature of, of practice better is that we also have a mobile app. And so everything that I've shown you today, every, all of the features that are available within the platform are also available on the app, including something like this. So that's also really great because it just keeps it really easy for your patient and your, you know, your group to communicate back and forth when they have it just at their fingertips on their phone. Um, so I did want to just mention that um, just because I think that's a really helpful piece when you're doing the group program. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so just continuing to scroll down here just to highlight, you can also share resources within the, the group feed. Um, if you have any, you know, maybe it's like an ebook PDF or a recipe or, you know, whatever it might be, you can also share links and, and so on. So just to sort of highlight um, how that works there. All right. And then I'm just going to head back to all programs. One thing I did want to mention is anytime you create a program and practice better, by clicking the three dots here, you have a few options. One thing I really wanted to highlight is the ability to duplicate the program. So this is really valuable. Let's say you ran a first round of your group program and you wanna run it again, but maybe you wanna make a few tweaks and you, know, you wanna change a few things um, as you do in different iterations of programs. You can actually just duplicate that um, and that will save you from having to like create something from scratch again, right? Um, so that can be really, really helpful. And, you know, let's say you ran the first round of the program as a fixed date program, but then going forward, you want to run it more evergreen. You could duplicate your fixed date program into an evergreen program and just make a few tweaks. So that's also an option for you as well. All right. Amazing. Any questions on the programs piece? For those of you who don't know evergreen, which is be a uh, something that people buy that's pre-recorded like classes and things like that so I don't know if people are familiar with Evergreen necessarily in this group but and you don't have to ever do group programs either I think um, this is just a great feature that they do offer but it's not and, and you know you may not be doing it now you might want to be doing it in the future but um, anyway I thought I'd mention that yeah, no, that's, that's a great point, Jody. Yeah. And I just, you know, the intention of today's session is really just to highlight all, you know, all of the major capabilities within the platform. So you see what's available and, you know, like Jody said, if there's, you know, potentially you might do the group piece in the future, just to know it's there and available for you kind of thing. So. Jen, um, Gabby has a question on Facebook. She wants to know if the client has access to the program, even after the completion of it. They do. Absolutely. Yep. So they'll, they'll continue to have access to the program unless you manually remove them. Um, or, you know, if say you as a practitioner, like got rid of your practice better account or something, then they wouldn't have access, but they'll continue to have access unless you actually removed them. Mm -hmm. Good question. All right. And I see a question here in the Zoom chat. Um, how do I download my current patients to this system if I change over from my existing EMR? Great question. Yeah. So we our, our customer success team is amazing. They're here to support all of our users and they can support you in doing that. So um, they can support you in sort of downloading what you need to download from your current system to then um, upload your patients and their, and their files and information into Practice Better. So that's something that our team can help you do. Yeah, I have to say the customer service has been excellent. You can book like a 15 minute session or whatever you need to, to just get everything clarified. So integrating into it has been, has been good. I mean, it's, and, and just, I'm just so amazed by the, so many features that really make things so much more streamlined and easy for me. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Thanks for sharing that, Jody. Yeah. Yeah. The support team is, is incredible and they're there to support you anytime. Like Jody said, they also offer um, 15 minute support calls if you need that. And we also have, you know, a, a library of resources um, like help articles, whether that's um, tutorial videos. And I also alluded earlier to deep dives, which is something we do once a month, which is basically like a, a live webinar where we dive deep into a certain feature. And then the replays for those are always on our YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, there's lots of, lots of support available to you. So Katie has a question if uh, the platform is HIPAA protected and what about using the video telehealth feature if that's HIPAA compliant? Yeah, awesome question. So yes, Practice Better is entirely HIPAA compliant. 
Um, the only piece that I'll mention is if you are planning to integrate a Zoom account, um, then you would need to purchase, we have a HIPAA compliant Zoom add-on, which if you purchase that through Practice Better, I think it's around $30 a month for that add-on. But if you were to get that from Zoom, I think it's like upwards of 200. So it's at a much reduced rate if you are planning to use Zoom, which again, um, you, you could just simply use our built-in telehealth feature if you're going to just do one-on-one -on -one virtual sessions with clients. If you do wanna do group virtual sessions and link that up with Practice Better, you do need to use Zoom. Um, and in that case, if you do need that piece to be HIPAA compliant, then you can purchase that additional add-on. That's a huge savings too. If you're, mm -hmm. if, instead of buying Zoom, HIPAA compliant Zoom, I mean, that alone would pay for the software for, for a practice better just in that savings. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question though. Um, let me see, any other questions? I'm just gonna take a look at our Zoom chat again to see if there's anything else that I missed here. Lisa's asking about pricing, uh, mm -hmm. depending on what features you use or things like that. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna navigate um, and can you still see my screen okay? Sure can. Okay, just amazing. So you guys know there's special, uh, special pricing available for members of this group this week only. So if you guys have any practitioner friends you think might be interested, please do invite them to join the group. They have to be a medical practitioner to join our group. And you can, or if they're not a medical practitioner, you can share the code with them if they're like a more of a coach, that's okay. Uh, you can do multiple practitioners in a practice, which is something, a feature that I'm taking advantage of now as well. So I know Jen can explain all the different packages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a great point, Jody. Yeah, so that's called our team plan. So that's sort of our highest plan. And that allows you to have multiple practitioners working together on one plan, which is really, really helpful if, if that's, you know, maybe where you're at now, or maybe where you're going in the future with your practice. Um, so the, this is just a little snapshot of the different plans. Now you can go in and actually, you know, view the full breakdown of all the features in the comparison, but we do have um, a free Sprout plan, which can be a nice way to get started. However, there are some limitations, like you can only have three clients, there's limited storage. You can't do any of that program um, piece on the free plan and, and, and so on. Um, and this is sort of the increase as, as you bump up. And again, um, just with regards to the programs piece. In order to do the fixed date program, you'll need to use the professional plan. And then if you want to do an evergreen program, that's the plus plan. I know that was one of the questions earlier. So yeah, so I'll, I can even put this, well, I can put this into the Zoom chat and um, we can share that elsewhere too. But yeah, we have that special offer available to, to the group. Um, and so that information is in, in the comments and in the chat. So that's going to provide you with 30% off for three months. And what I wanna mention with that too, that's available for new Practice Better users or those who are currently on our free Sprout plan only. Um, and it'll be available for one week from today. So until April 1st, um, just before midnight there. Yeah, that's a really great deep discount. And we will be offering a continuing discount in this group, but nothing as deep as this one is right now. So if you guys are thinking about it, I, you know, you're, you're going to love it. There's no, there's no commitment, correct? If they use it for a month and they're on a one of the big plans are a couple months and they, for any reason, don't like it, they can just cancel, correct? Exactly. Yep. Yep. Cancel at any time. Yep. Yeah. Sharice has a question in Zoom. She said, so current providers, do they have their local lab work blood order as a PDF form documents and they print it out and give to patients? Okay. I'm just, I see the question here. I'm just going to read it again to make sure I understand. Do they have their local lab work? order as a PDF form. Yeah, so that that's one way that they may do that for sure. And then, yeah, like I said, that what you can do is if, if there are any PDF documents like lab work um, results or anything along those lines, then you can still store that within Practice Better. Um, and you know you can keep that organized within within the platform um, to be able to share with patients. So you know, let's say you know you got a patient's lab work back and you want to upload that into Practice Better, you can put it into the patient's document folder, and then you could even share it with them right in Practice Better, um, or you could have them you know 
or you could print it out. It, you know, it depends how you work with them, but if you want to keep it all virtual, then you can just utilize that document folder to share it with them that way. Yeah, it's great because you can share your screen too. If you're doing virtual appointments in, in review lab, work with them. I keep it all stored and practice better. All the, all the labs, um, the supplements, the, all the session notes, everything is in one, <laughs> one system, which is great. And, yeah. you know, the messages, they all get stored together. So you can just reference things easily and not have to search everywhere for, for what, what you're looking for. Exactly, Jody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I see a question about do you integrate with active campaign. So we don't have a direct integration with any email marketing platforms. However, we do have an integration with something called Zapier. So if anyone's familiar with the Zapier, it's basically a platform that allows you to basically connect to other platforms to allow them to trigger certain things to happen. So as an example, let's say um, you set up a zap between active campaign and practice better. And one example could be maybe you want um, it to be set up so that anytime a client uh, or a patient signs up for a program or a service that will automatically add them into your active campaign platform. So you could set something like that up. So there's lots of different types of zaps you can set up within Zapier, um, but that's one way that you can connect the two platforms. But there is a uh, functionality within the group programs to send out emails, correct? Because I've done that a little bit. Yeah. So, so yeah. So you, are you looking, referring to the broadcast feature potentially? The, just that you can set up kind of some automatic emails to trigger when, you know, say sa someone signs up or, you Oh, know. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So as part of the programs, you can optionally set up um, a, a registration confirmation email that will automatically be sent to the patient as soon as they sign up. And then as I had showed in each of the modules, you can also optionally have a welcome email for each module that you can customize as well. And that's all automated. Mm-hmm. All right, amazing. Any other questions that are coming through? Do you happen to know if Zapier is an extra charge? Um, there is a free plan. I think it's based on how many zaps are sent and then you'd have to start paying. So I'm not sure of Zapier's pricing, but it's not, it's not connected to practice better. Like that would be something you would set up through them. But there is a free plan. I'm just not sure exactly the details of what that is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So if um, I just want to thank you so much again, Jen, for presenting this. And uh, I hope you guys decide to use it. It's made my life a lot easier. It's, it's amazing all the features and don't be overwhelmed by them. Just start with importing the clients in there and start using it. And it, as you get to know it, you can, you can kind of uncover more and more features and get to know it better. I know it seems like, I remember the first time I saw this, this, <laughs> This presentation with Jen, I was like, oh my God, how am I ever going to learn all this? Because, uh, you know, I'm not as techie savvy, but it really is quite simple to learn and navigate. And once you get used to it, it's amazing. So it's definitely worth transitioning. And I hope you guys take advantage of the coupon. You need, you need to use the link that's in the comments below or in the chat on the right. Uh, use that link. Use the coupon code F as in Frank, M, F, like as in functional medicine for dot, dot, dot. That's our group. And so FMF 30 for 30% 30 off. And after this week, after April 1st, starting April 7, you can use the code FMF 20 for 20% discount. And that'll be on the first four months, but it makes more sense to do the 30% off the first three months. Uh, it's, it's actually a deeper discount if you do the math. So I hope you guys decide to do it. It is uh, wonderful. It's worth it. And you don't don't start with something else and then try to transition because that's so much more work. And in the long run, you will wind up paying more. Trust me on this. Between my bookkeeper, doing the contracts separately, doing the uh, appointment confirmations and scheduling and everything, you have your schedule in there. Everything's integrated. It just makes life so much easier. So I hope you guys decide to do it. Um, if there Jody. are any further questions, feel free to speak up. Yeah, Terry. Yeah, ahead. Jody, before we go, um, I think this will be uh, something of interest to the entire group. So Sharice wants to know, did you address super bills and what about ICD-10 and CPT codes? Yeah, so so we you have the ability to create super bills within the platform. 
Absolutely. And then, yeah, you can set up your billing codes as well. Um, and so, yeah, like I'm basically yes to both of those questions. Um, I mean, yeah, I won't go deep into that right now, but like I said, we have tons of resources on all of these things available, um, whether it's on our help articles or you can reach out to our customer success team to support you in that too. Yeah, there's not too much they haven't thought of really. I think you guys have been around a while, right? In terms of- um, In and 27, think, about 2017. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. And so they take customer feedback pretty seriously too. Every time I say, well, do you have this? And they're like, you know what, let me bring that to the development team. Maybe we'll add that, you know? So it's great. They're very responsive and I, I really enjoyed the, the software and I think it's worth every dime. I, I wish I'd done it when I first started, so. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, thank you all for joining. And were there any other questions that we missed? I know Lisa says she's going to be doing it for sure. Great. And uh, I think that's it. Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Terry. That's all. All right. Terry is my assistant too. She is an admin uh, moderator in the group as well in the uh, Functional Medicine for Physicians. NPs, PAs, and nurse group as well. So you can put a little face with the name. <laughs> but uh, thank you all for joining and uh, hope to hope you guys decide to give it a shot. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Thanks again, everyone. Jen. Appreciate Thanks, it. Bye. Okay, bye.